Nick, I hurt you. I'm sorry. I don't know why I wasted so much time on this podcast pretending I didn't care. I guess I just didn't want to feel like this. It hurts. But I love you. I'm totally and completely in love with you. I don't care if it's too late. I'm telling you anyway. Please say something. Wait. You should know. If you come any closer, I am not letting you go. You can't fight in here, this is the war room. You can't handle the truth. King Kong ain't got shit on me. I am the I am so much crazy. I am the one who knocks. Go ahead. Make my day. Let's stay, big boy, huh? That's bright. Fuck you. Everybody on? Good. Great. Great. Welcome to Facing Off, a podcast where we share our opinions about two movies we find to be similar by comparing, contrasting, and rating them. I'm your clumsy but adorable host, Gabe. And uh, what's up, Dr. Metzner? How you doing, Nick? Oh, dude, I love that that's, uh, the Dr. Metzner is... Is Carrie Hughes or whatever? <laughs> yeah, I always... dude. Yeah. He's like second build in the movie. But yeah. uh, hey, I'm, well, uh, I'm a very handsome doctor with a beard. That is true. Now. I'm actually the doctor, I think. Technically. Technically, yeah. Well, um, well wait a humble brag. We so. got a special guest, Nick. Do you want to introduce Yeah, her? this is uh, this is my fiance, uh, Julie. Hey, Julie, you're sitting here. Hey, I am sitting here. Yeah. Hey, Julie, welcome on. Welcome. Thanks, Gabe. This welcome. is uh, your podcast uh, premiere, mm-hmm. your debut. My big your debut. Your debutante. Yeah. Um, Are you excited? I am. I'm just uh, not really sure what to expect here i've watched you a guys record yelling. this but i've never actually taken have you watched this i don't think you've watched us well I've, oh early recordings. i've heard you oh yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. so uh julie you want to say some things about yourself or do you want to get into this it's up to you tell us about yourself who um, are you i am nick's fiance and that's it <laughs> that's my <laughs> identity, oh, identity. old-fashioned <laughs> sexist <laughs> The dowry was quite effective. Well, she's not a feminist. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's fine. Well, Julie, what we're really happy work? to have you on. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Are you allowed to you're say our first, uh You're our first industry insider Ooh, on the podcast. That's true. Sure. Yeah. So I work for the Walt Disney Company on yeah. this cute little app called Movies Anywhere, where you can buy and watch your movies that you buy anywhere. Yeah, it's adorable. It's yeah. an adorable little app. <laughs> it definitely is. It has cute little eyes. Yeah, it's cute so cute. Cute little button nose. It, it doesn't. It um, doesn't. It's just an app. Well, cool. Congratulations <laughs> on your new job. Thanks. Congratulations on your guys' engagement. Um, happy to have you both here. Uh, before we get into this, we are going to spoil these two movies. If you yes. haven't seen No Strings Attached or Friends with Benefits, guess, yeah. you kind of understand what the concept is just based on the title. But uh, sure, we're going to spoil it. Um, a little bit of cleanup. I made some mistakes. I do that sometimes. I know a lot about movies, but I also make mistakes. On our last episode, uh, I made a few, but there's one important one. Julie, what did I do wrong? First of all, I don't even know what name you said, but you Igor were... Igor Grigorovich. Yeah, you said like Grigorovich, which like, I think is a spy kid's name. Yeah. Um, but his <laughs> so name... So there is a Grigorovich in, in Harry Potter. He's another wand maker. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, but I was still wrong. Still wrong. Um, his name is Igor Karkroff, and he is the headmaster for Durmstrang. And mm-hmm. you were saying how he was kind of like a red herring going into the great in the hall. movie. In the movie, yes, yeah. that was my. But you correctly brought in the reason for him being right. in the so great he, hall. So he's in the thing. great hall, yeah. and he is kind of just trying to deter all the other Durmstrang students from entering the Triwizard Tournament. So yeah. makes sense. Victor Crumb can compete because <laughs> something he's, about Durmstrang. It's like a yeah. Durmstrang sounds like a like a skateboarding company or something. Yeah, like, fucking dude, I like, used dude, to shred I, with Durmstrang. <laughs> yeah, Thrasher. Dude, I got this. Durmstrang? I got this sick Baker? Durmstrang hoodie the other day. It was it was so so tight. It's fleece on the inside. Oh shit! It's so it's dude, hella it has warm, like extra dude. padding too. It's hella warm, dude. Downstairs, you can shred gnar, and it it's like fifty degrees outside, and you're like, it's warm. I'm yeah. warm. Yeah, I'm warm. Yeah. 
Good, good character. <laughs> Thanks. Man. Uh, thank you for the cleanup there. I apologize to all the Harry Potter fans out there. I am a big Harry Potter fan. I fucked up though. Mm. It, it's it's okay if you don't trust me. Um, little <laughs> shout out to our girl, Kevin Gathman, Maddie Gathman. Kevin. Uh, uh, Hi, she was Kevin. in Julie's sorority. Uh, she's one of our close friends. Uh, she also sent us an email, but it wasn't hate mail. She sent us it a very was, kind it was email. Kind mail. Yeah, you guys can send us emails. We love them. For, uh, facingoffpodcast at gmail.com. You can send um, us snail mail. Yeah. Um, do whatever. Pigeons. That's where you attach a mail to the back of a snail and you just hope that it gets where it needs to. Yeah. Use carrier pigeons. Um, yeah, but thank you, Maddie. We appreciate your support and fandom um, and your friendship. Yes, uh, and we will continue to create. Do you have any shout outs for anyone? Do you, you talk to anyone? Um, a shout out? Not this time. Good. But, I uh, hate all those people. But I'll save it for our Christmas episode. Ooh, good. Because Christmas is a time for presents. And yeah, just around the corner. Sharing your love. Um, uh, stay tuned at the end. We're going to have a promotion from our, uh, from our friends at the movie zealots podcast, um, which is made possible by the cross promotion feature on red circle. Um, uh, red circle is an innovative podcast hosting platform that we're really appreciative of all their help. Um, yeah. getting this podcast out there for Absolutely. more information on how red circle can benefit your podcast, go to redcircle.com today and stay tuned at the end for a snippet of movie zealots. Nick. Yes. Get into the synopsis. Okay, so See. these movies essentially follow the same cookie cutter pattern. Mm, but like for the most part, this is how they go. Uh, no Strings Attached is about Emma, who is played by Natalie Portman, and Adam, who is played by Ashton Kutcher. They knew each other as children when Adam pulled literally the worst pickup line ever as a middle schooler. Uh, he was very straightforward. Do you remember the pickup line, Gabe? Uh, can I finger you? <laughs> no, you can't, you sick, sick man. Uh, when they're adults, Ashton Kutcher is better at pickup lines, um, but worse at feelings. Then uh, they, they kind of cross paths uh, after uh, a couple different times in different settings. Adam comes over one time uh, to Emma's house when he's hammered. They wake up the next day, he doesn't have any clothes on, then they bang, and then they start to bang more in a casual yeah. sense. Mm. Then feelings happen. But, as it turns out, Emma's not good at doing feelings good. Yeah. So, she lashes out and really hurts Adam's feelings. Turns out, Adam is quite complex, but also quite spiteful. Um, they have a falling out, but then they fall back in, and then they have love. They are love. They love. I get knocked down. Yeah, I get and then back that song's in yeah. the movie a lot. It's not actually in it, but no? it should be. Is it? No, there's ah, a great whatever. soundtrack, but whatever. Is it by... Uh, That's Chumbawamba. That's Chumbawamba? <laughs> yeah. It's not Third Eye Blind? <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Boom. In Friends with Benefits, Jamie, who is played by Mila Kunis, and Dylan, who is uh, played by the multi-talented, extremely handsome Justin Timberlake, uh, meet when Jamie recruits Dylan to work at GQ and move to New York. First comes friendship, then comes banging, then comes feelings, then comes a falling out. Does that sound familiar? Then comes a reunion. <laughs> then comes a mission of feelings because just like Emma in the other movie, Jamie is bad at doing feelings good. Then uh, they fall in love. Also, Woody Harrelson plays a gay man who jokes about dongs the whole movie. So Very, very <laughs> accurate. He has a cool boat, though. Good synopsis. That's like a solid A-plus boat. That little boat that he yeah. has to um, go back and forth boat. from New Jersey. Um, lives yeah. in Jersey, but there's no way he's going to get on a ferry. Unless it's a dinner and a show. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the reason why we're doing this one... Um, I mean, clearly they are almost the same movie. They came out in 2011. Yeah. They no came out the same year. They basically have the same plot. No Strings Attached was originally <laughs> going to be called Fuck Buddies, but then they were like, we can't call it that and try to like sell this movie. But then it was going to be called Friends of Benefits. But then they found out that Friends of Benefits <laughs> was coming out that year, so they changed it. And so throughout the movie, they say both of those. Yeah. Um, and the other reason is... Julie and I had a big argument about these two movies because this is going to be, I mean, this has been a battle through this decade of which is the better rom-com about Friends with Benefits. And uh, let's set it straight today. We are going to be the I think definitive be, end to that conversation. I think this is going to be really fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, there are so many similarities. Oh, a million similarities. Both of the women are bad at feelings and both of the men have 
fathers who work in the same field as them and are yeah. established oh, in true. that field. <laughs> so yeah. they have like com- like uh, complexes about like their their worth in their industry. Wait, yeah. W- Richard Jenkins, his father. Yeah, he wrote for the New York Times. He says oh. for or the L.A. Times. Sorry, the L.A. Times for years. That makes sense. Like a, like more than a decade. Cool. Yeah. All right, it's ridiculous. Julie, you want to explain our rating scale? Oh. <laughs> Just for anyone who hasn't listened, we have a specific rating scale, and you're a newbie, so we'll the, one sure. yeah. the one to the seven. The one to seven. The one to seven. Not right. the not the category. Not oh, the category. Not the we'll categories? Do those later. Yeah. yeah. Well, Julie's looking at us like, um, uh, no. I'll do it. <laughs> no, the one through seven. What yeah. is one? One is like, it's horrible. It's very bad. Yeah. Four is kind of like an average. Seven is, it's outstanding as a rom com. Boom. Boom. And we're talking about it within the confines of the category. Um, but right. yeah, very well said, Julie. Um, our five categories this time, we're doing a little bit of a twist since this is uh, a rom com. It's a comedy and a romance. So we have to have both. We're going to do actoring, originality, spectac, and hashtag hilarity, pulse. Hashtag pulse is Los Angeles's. <laughs> I can't do it. Hashtag pulse. Hashtag pulse is Los Angeles's. New category. Favorite new category. Within that category. Midgets on a backpack. <laughs> roller skating. Throw through music. Ice. Yeah. And then we're going to do legacy <laughs> as well. Uh, let's get it started. Yeah. With... We'll explain what hashtag pulse is, but we came up with it's a our new ridiculously one. named category for, uh, for rom-coms. Yeah, it's very accurate. So let's start it off. Actoring, which okay. is uh, when we talk about actoring, we're talking about the performances, but we're also talking about the writing and directing and how that allowed the actors to act. Um, yeah. Whether if it was did the, they have, did the, the actors have the tools they, yes. they needed? Yeah. Um, let's start with no strings attached. Julie, take it away. All right. So I currently have written down a five, but okay. I've been going back and forth with it in my head, and I think I'm going to change it to a six. Whoa. Whoa. So it was slightly above, and now you're taking it firmly above. As average. a rom com, yeah. yeah. I will. I think that's fair. That's fair. In the confines of a rom com, that's, that's what you should do. Yeah. Yeah. Explain why. Yeah. Who are your um, highlights? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, you've got the coach, and you've got Natalie Portman. Mm. Um, and Is that I good think. Coach? Sorry. <laughs> what really takes No Strings Attached just... Okay, sorry, Gabe. No Strings Attached is the better movie. Uh, wh- we why don't you wait until later. you hear what well, I have to say? <laughs> fine, that's fine. But I'm going to just say... So one of the things that I think that No Strings Attached does a lot better, it has those side characters that yeah. I think just really help push yeah, the main characters along more and help move the plot. Right. I won't even make it a surprise anymore. When I rewatch both of these, I now agree. And it's funny. I'll explain. So I will get to it in Legacy. Wait, what do you agree with? I that wasn't think clear. now, so when we first had this it. discussion, I said you that Friends with argument? Benefits is way better than No <laughs> Strings Attached. And I was like, everyone thinks it's better. Technically speaking, everyone did think it was better. Right, but yeah. when I rewatched, I really enjoyed No Strings Attached. I thought it was perfectly pleasant, and I absolutely loathed <laughs> yeah, Friends dude. of Benefits <laughs> for being so just like good. the least clever rom com. Um, but well said about actor. Do you have any other performances that you really like that you want to um, shout out? Um, I don't think so. For In No Strings, well, then, Nick, why don't you talk? about Yeah, it you a go ahead. Bit. So yeah, just did a, I'm going to piggyback off of what Julie said about the secondary characters. To me. This can be boiled down to Jake Johnson or Mindy Kaling. Yeah. Oh, uh, Greta. Ger- do Jake Johnson versus Greta Gerwig. Ger- Greta Gerwig, fine. Because she's I mean, great, dude. Okay. What? Well, well, okay. Well, did you continue? I mean, no, no. Jake Johnson is a, the second secondary character in No Strings Attached, yeah. and all of the other secondary oh, sorry. characters I was talking, are far yeah. better. I think You're Mindy right. Kaling is also. Is she in No Strings or she? She's, she's in, in No, no strings. strings. That's okay. Uh, yeah. All right, I mixed it up. It doesn't yeah, matter. Fair. Jake Johnson and pretty much every secondary character, with the exception of Mindy Kaling, who I loathe as an actress. I'm she sorry. was fine in this one, dude. Yeah. I don't think she's ever really very funny, but it's okay. It's yeah. whatever. Sometimes in the office. Yeah, sometimes. But yeah, Jake Johnson and all of the other secondary characters are pretty great. Okay. And yeah. I think that that 
in and of itself. I mean, obviously, I don't know if I believe Natalie Portman in this role the whole time, but she's yeah. still Natalie Portman, mm-hmm. so she's great. Ashton Kutcher's pretty awesome in this. He's OG Kutch for sure. OG Kutch. <laughs> uh, so I gave it a five because I think okay. it's solid all the way around, particularly in terms of the secondary characters. Whereas in our other movie, that might not be the case. Yeah, um, I'm going to all all well said for this one. I'm giving it a four, an average, just the average in terms of rom-coms. Um, I never really think with rom-coms that the acting is that spectacular. I really do like um, how believable Ashton Kutcher and Portman are in their roles. Um, I yeah. kind of wish they didn't make Ashton Kutcher so serious. It seemed like I didn't know where they were going with this character at the beginning. But it is cool because he's normally typecast as a moron. Right. And he's not a moron in this. No, he's, he's uh, very... He's more clumsy and lazy, I guess, than a, mo- uh, than a moron. Um, yeah, he's more complex than yeah. he is in most other movies. He's yeah. like... There's a lot of layers to his character. Like right. You find out that he's kind of... Like he doesn't want his father to tell anyone in the industry about his script that he wrote. Like, yeah. He wants to be a self-made person. And right. I don't know. It's, he's got a little bit more complexity. No, I, than honestly, I expected. He, he's great. I think you're right. All the side acting is great. Kevin Klein is always amazing. I thought Greta Gerwig was was awesome. It's kind of crazy she doesn't act anymore, really, because um, she's so good in this as the best friend. Well, you in know Allie who's Parker. not good, though? Uh, who? Ludacris. Ludacris is awful. That is Okay, <laughs> that's actually the reason I'm giving it a little bit lower. I think Luda's awful. Natalie Portman is good. She's one of my favorite actresses. I thought her drunk acting was not good until the line when she's like, you look like a pumpkin, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that. Uh, we're Lake, not pumpkins. Oh, we're ladies. I forgot how <laughs> funny Lake Bell is in this movie. As the awkward like assistant to the director on that TV oh, she's show. she's good, yeah. She's so good at being a clumsy, awkward and person. And who's the pumpkin? Who's the girl that's a pumpkin that was on, uh, oh, she's she's on SNL? Yeah, she was on she's SNL. She's pretty funny. Do you know Nassim Pedrod is in this movie? Yes. She doesn't yes, say anything. I told you, Julie. I looked at Julie and I was like, Nassim Pedrad was in this for I'm giving one it a second. four for not using Nassim Pedrad. Dude, she's but, hilarious. Uh, she but is. I did, I really liked it. I just felt like <laughs> it was standard. It, I, I wouldn't give it below. Um, I, I really enjoyed all the acting. I just felt it was kind of average for the type of movie. And maybe that's just a bias against rom-coms that I have. Um, yeah, absolutely. But let's do Friends of Benefits acting. What did you give it, Julie? I just changed it. Okay. I lowered it. To, Whoa, boom. Yeah, um, I'm lowering it to a three. Oh, okay. So one of Fair. my things with Justin Timberlake that I'm just automatically disappointed in any role that he has and anybody who writes him into a script is yeah. that if you don't make him <laughs> sing or dance, I don't I mean, he I, does I the care, crisscross plus. thing, but that's it. Yeah. That's not enough. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's just you got Justin Timberlake. What a waste of And you're talent. wasting his talent. He's a five-tool yeah. talent. I mean, you only yeah. use two of his tools. There are probably two movies. Abs and face. Yeah, yeah. there are probably two <laughs> yeah, movies but. that I've ever seen him in where he doesn't sing or dance, and I love them. Yeah. Like Alpha Dog and the old Disney Channel so movie love Model Behavior. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that. That's when he, That's like right after NSYNC, isn't it? Maybe Might be know. during. Oh, I don't. Okay. I don't actually know what year yeah. it came out. But that was one of the things that I wrote down. Um, and just overall, I didn't really believe anything that their characters did or any feeling mm-hmm. that they had. Yeah, we have, save it for the the pulse category. Cause. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm talking about just any like I don't believe in their jobs that they're doing. <laughs> okay. I don't yeah. like nothing about. That's fair. Nothing yeah. about. Yeah, the, I mean, like, their how would he be at the level that he's at not, in his company? Oh yeah. my gosh! I also wrote down um, <laughs> stuff about him. So he's from L.A. in the movie, and he goes to New York. And when he gets to New York, he is just acting like such a sheltered little boy yeah. like they're crossing the street and the, like, this is definitely and the, and like the, and the crosswalk <laughs> isn't on and he's like oh my you're just gonna cross the street oh, like yeah. she's like oh you cute la boys like you don't know how to jaywalk yeah I'm like, Shut, come and, to my city and he's like <laughs> when they're like going through traffic and he's he says something like about the traffic and oh yeah it's like all little yeah actually save that i guess for when we talk about like writing in terms of storyline and dialogue like originality but those are good points uh are there any other things that you like or dislike about 
Like why it's a three? Because that's just only slightly um, below average. I also love Woody Harrelson, but yeah. in this movie, I don't really know the point of his character. He, he has yeah. no one-liners. <laughs> one-liners what? that are almost homophobic. Yeah, like mm-hmm. he's playing a gay guy. It they don't. Hasn't they aged don't age well. well. I gave it a four in actoring okay. because uh, I mean the first note that I wrote was less dialogue, please. Because so many lines. All of the dialogue is. Not good, and there is so much dialogue. It's yeah. just like, shut up, guys. I don't want to hear it anymore. And it's like, they're just such ridiculous lines that I just can't, I can't handle, like, like strictly dickily. I thought that was kind of funny. There's just like ridiculous it's horrible. stuff. It's a horrible line, but it was funny. I just don't believe, like, I don't think the script gave the actors what they needed. Mila Kunis is significantly better than Justin Timberlake, I think, in this. Absolutely. But, but she, I mean, even she's like, it's not like she was given much to really work with. She's just better than he is. And she's more believable in her, her role. Yeah. I mean, that might just be because she's an actress solely and he's more of a musician well sure it's yeah, possible <laughs> but he's been good in things like social yeah, network he's and good, alpha like dog you said, and, he's good in uh, alpha dog like yeah. i don't know it's just like all the way around like i don't think that it's particularly atrocious but i don't yeah. think it's good so i'm gonna give it an average yeah i'm gonna give it a two. Ooh, uh, yeah, so, i kind of figured you would uh i think jt and kunis are really fun and i i do think that they keep things afloat with a messy story and like the quippy dialogue um i do really really hate watching movies with extremely beautiful people bitch about how they can't find anybody and both of these movies do that i know we're supposed to just believe that they're characters and not the actual people but like i i'm tired of hearing that um uh the writing just isn't really realistic about any of the characters. As you said, like their jobs, I think the way that they talk to people, the way that they think about people, um, it's just like over the top and it's people playing like characters instead of their natural selves. So like Emma Stone and Andy Samberg, who I forgot are in this, (laughs) they're just characters. Like they're not, like neither of them were believable human beings. They're like more extreme versions of people that we probably know. Yeah. Um, I do want to say this is easily one of the best Patricia Clarkson performances. The mom for Mila Kunis. Oh, I yeah. was dying of laughter at everything she said. She was in that. a highlight. I liked her. Um, she's also great in Easy A um, as the mom. And this is the same director as that. Um, I forgot about Richard Jenkins being in this. It's kind of funny that we've done multiple Richard Jenkins yeah. movies recently. He's just a great actor. Um, that kind of like threw in that whole like sad storyline about I know, him. It's so sad. It's weird. It it doesn't really fit. Um, oh, I, I have to say, I forgot how fucking funny Sean White is. I know he's trying because he's not an actor, but I laughed at everything he said. Dude. Like, no. Dude, I, I'm sorry, but the part when he says, um, well, the, the stupid part is when he's like, one more word and I'll fuck you up like dynamite. He's like, like dynamite? And then. That doesn't make. Uh, no, no, but if I, if I ever run into you again, I'll crush your earlobes and make soup <laughs> stock out of them. Dude, he's hilariously being so upset. I think that, that the one lines they gave him are funny, but his delivery is so not good that I can't. <laughs> I just can't Fair get enough. behind him. I also think that there's a there's a good this can boil down to another kind of discussion, which is like, I mean, I don't really believe that either Natalie Portman or Mila Kunis are quote unquote damaged, like they keep saying. No, but at least Natalie Portman, you can like see it develop why she's maybe the way she is. Mila Kunis, they just keep saying she's damaged. Well, the issue, she's damaged. I'm damaged. I'm well, not. No, I, Natalie like, Portman's character wasn't that she was necessarily damaged, like she was, but it was like the the real thing where she's like, I'm busy all the time. I am I, I am in my residency. Right, yeah, exactly. I don't have time for this, and I've never been good at love. So let's just fuck. Mila Kunis is like, my mom's an absolute horror. Um, I don't know who my dad is. And I can't figure out love because of that. And I believe that to a certain degree. I feel like they but just the way she say does it. it. Yeah. I feel like they just keep True. saying it. That's a better it. way and of putting it. And that's like, you can't just say it. You have to show it. That's a just, way better way. Yeah. Let's move on from that. Um, so that's a two for me. Uh, what was that? A four from Nick? 
yeah, and then a three a from you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's move on to originality. Originality. We're just talking about how creative this movie is and if it stands out in the genre. Um, if there were things that you liked that they did in terms of like uh, rom-com tropes and stuff, which we'll also get into on hashtag polls. Julie started off with friends with benefits. All right, so it's going to be a two from me. Okay. Um, I think just, you know, the originality thing, having these two movies come out in the same year yeah. with the exact same So I think plot. No Strings Attached came out in January. It came out in January. And then, and then Friends of Benefit, June or July June or, or July or something yeah. like that. But yeah, I think, so by the time this movie came out, I, like I didn't want to see it. I'd already seen this movie, uh, okay. right? Like yeah. it, a few months before. Um, So I think I waited until it came out on DVD and I... Netflix did or something right but yeah friends with benefits there's I don't think anything original about this movie at yeah. all. okay yeah I don't either I gave it a two what did you give it two. you give it a two a two yeah I yeah. gave it a two as well because it's like it's just th- uh, like the shell of a romantic comedy yeah with the same basic plot as a different romantic comedy so like how could it be anything how could it be? It's not original. There's nothing about it that's original. We were probably so, like five or ten minutes into the movie and I just sighed very deeply. That's what happened yeah. to me. It was like I finally watched. So I watched No Strings Attached first with Danny. I was like, wow, this is a lot better than I remember. And then I started watching Friends with Benefits and I was like, holy fuck, I don't think I could do this. Yeah, it's pretty obvious within the first few minutes. and uh, The dialogue just doesn't hold up. So I actually gave it. A one. Yeah, yeah. And part of that is because No Strings Attached <laughs> did come out before it. So unfortunately for Friends of Benefits, sorry, but you came out afterwards, so you're not any more creative. The big issue is that I felt like this movie wanted to be something that it wasn't. Like the movie is written in a way in a way where the characters make fun of romance movies. And there's even the line where she's passing by the the ugly truth uh, poster and she's like Shut up, Catherine Heigl. Blah blah blah. And yeah. then they made like they talk about all the uh, all the comments about like romance music and movies and stuff. And they're like, oh, it's so corny how this happens. But then it re- it really seems like they're making fun of the romance movies. And then it becomes a romance movie, a serious one, and a rom com. And it's like I can't tell if the movie's in on its own joke. Like at a certain point, it, it no. Kinda... Another good thing is like, so you're gonna talk about the the movie within a movie here? Yeah, I I was about to do that. Yeah, I, go I, ahead. And then I'll, I just I'll love. Add. So Julie and I were talking about this the other day. I really love whenever there's a fake movie within a movie. Um, Home Alone has it with the um, uh, angels uh, with dirty faces or whatever i don't remember what it's called but there are fake movies within it train wreck has a really good one with the dog walker with daniel radcliffe um this one has this fake rom-com or romance Mm -hmm. in it with jason siegel and rashida jones which i found funny i love how like it's the only reason i did not yeah (laughs) there's the or the empire state building (laughs) it's the only reason i didn't give the movie a one i look back at my notes because that i think is actually fairly original and funny yeah, but, but like, it's not. It, they don't execute it well. And the best, the black, the best example of it is that. Did you watch the post credit scene? No. There's a post credit scene. God. Um, don't do that. You're don't not do Marvel. It. You're not it's Marvel. It's not. It's bad. I mean, like. Did someone go ha ha in your ass? No, oh. no. Uh, what was it, Julie? Uh, it. It's like it's a. Uh, oh, it's um. It's Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake on a couch watching the bloopers of the oh. fake movie. No, no. They're, and they're watching bloopers of the fake movie and they're like, bloopers are dumb or something. Like, No, no, he says bloopers are my favorite part. Oh. And then they show a couple oh. bloopers and it's like not funny. I just yeah, don't think this movie... Bloopers are dumb because they were dumb. It lasts like 15 yeah. seconds too. Um, I don't think that this movie added anything to the rom-com thing. And I don't think it was clever enough to be able to make fun of other things. Just be a straight-up parody, like uh, one that I'm going to recommend at the end. Yeah, you might as well. So that's a one uh, for me, twos from Nick and Julie. Uh, Let's talk about No Strings Attached originality. I gave this one a three because I needed to give it a higher rating than the other movie. Yeah. Because I like it better, and that's pretty much... The only reason, because I also don't think that it's particularly original. Right. Um, it's still just a romantic comedy, and it's very much like sticks to the basics when it comes to that. Okay. Um, however, I do think that it's 
funnier than some other romantic comedies. And I think that overall, it's actually a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's all I have, really. What about I you, You give it a higher score. I also gave you it a put three. You closer if you want. Yeah. Um, because I, too, felt that it needed a higher score than Friends with Benefits because I like it more. But I did have a reason that I thought it was a little bit more original. Um, I really liked his dad in No Strings Attached. And I thought it's funny that his dad gets all his ex-girlfriends. Yeah. Especially yeah. even so like, in the end, it's Lake Bell. Yeah. With him. yeah. So, Should we tell him? Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kevin Klein is really good. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Um, so, uh, did you know that Elizabeth Merriweather is the one who wrote this? She's the one who does who created New Girl. So oh, that's really? like yeah. she must love Jake Johnson for doing that. Um, she also somehow finds like the coolest LA like lofts and apartments. I yeah. loved Ashton Kutcher's apartment. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh Once yeah. Once you get to our age, you just start like there focusing are some on really stuff good. Like that. Justin Timberlake has some really dope apartments that absolutely cost way too much money. Definitely. Oh my God, his apartment is it's, insane. His apartment's easily it's like, like five million. Penthouse of penthouses. It's ridiculous. Do you have any other notes about like why you gave it a three? That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, like, mean it's I gave just... it. A, I gave it a two. <laughs> I liked it. I I yeah. also felt in my head it had to be above it, and so it worked out that I gave the yeah. other one the yeah, lowest just, score possible. We just had to give it one more. <laughs> so this screenplay was actually featured in the 2008 blacklist, which is like a list of the most liked unmade scripts of that year which i i just can't imagine that it could be one of the most liked ones but it was fun it's a really simple story that's kind of why i'm not calling right. it original it's uh it's well structured but they kind of rush the backstory at the beginning i i would have liked a little more development of why they know each other yeah. um and then uh, the, the issue is just mostly that there's just a million of this type of movie i do like the concept of a uh, Here's what I really like about the writing about the characters. I love the concept of having someone who is professional and intelligent in her field, but not emotionally intelligent uh, in Natalie Portman's character. And then someone that's Ashton Kutcher, who's like kind of uh, hasn't really amounted to much in his life, is kind of considered clumsy and maybe a little moronic, but he's very emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who has to get her to understand what's really happening between them. So I really like that. That's what kept it away from like a one just because I didn't find it that creative in any way. No. But it's solid. It's yeah, a good movie. It's a good, it is a good flick. It's so fun. Let's move on to uh, Spectac Hilarity, Hilarity, which is where we talk about uh, Spectacularity. We usually talk about the engagement level of the movie, like how engaged you were, whether you were worried about runtime or you were bored and distracted. And then bringing in... A comedy aspect is like how well balanced was it comedically? Did you find yourself really entertained in terms of the comedy or did you feel like there was a lot of like stupid lines that took you out of it or it wasn't funny enough? So Julie started off with uh, no strings attached, um, spectacular hilarity. All right. So I gave it a five for spectacular hilarity. I think there are a lot of really great lines in this movie. Um, What's your favorite? What's a good one? You didn't write any down? I wrote some down. I, I like the can I finger you line. Um, I think that's just like one of the best lines in any opening scene for like a rom-com. Um, I mean, it's a I classic. Guess. You don't, I don't, oh, I don't, classic. I don't generally a... go around quoting it, but like. This is a big, uh, I just laughed at this. I don't think it's like one of the best quotes, but it's just Lake Bell's performance when he's like, all right, go ahead, t- take this chair. And she goes, oh. That is a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, the Christopher Walken one, when he like walks in, he's like, get a cocktail for the ladies. He's like, Christopher Walken. Like Christopher no one Walken. notices. Yeah. Oh, you look like a, a girl Rick Moranis. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, he's an amazing lover. That's why they call him Bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the man with two gay dads. I'm super straight though, so like <laughs> when Jake Johnson he just laughs out loud. I love straight. that they bring in the gay dads at the end, uh, and they're all like hugging each other. Yeah. It's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, was it, was it like you you give it a four or five? I give it a five. It just kept you engaged in terms of the story and in terms of the comedy. Yeah, I felt like yeah. the comedy wasn't ever. Bad, no, I don't think and, there's like, a lot that it tried too yeah. hard or anything. Yeah. And again, like I think that the side characters, like the best friends, are a good 
little comedic break when there's maybe a more yeah, serious Yeah, I mean, there's also on. the Jake Johnson story. He also falls in love in this movie. He does fall in love. Yeah. Jay, I thought... Th- I honestly was more into the Jake Johnson, Greta Gerwig relationship than the other yeah, one. Yeah, they fall It was in cool because both of them were kind of the clumsy friends, the clumsy idiot friends who couldn't find anyone. Yeah. And then they like are really serious about it's the love. It's cute as hell, man. Funny, yeah. also, what did you, what, sorry. when Ashton Kutcher makes her like a period mixtape and he brings her over cupcakes and everything. I love that when he's like, you, and he you, like understands. He's like, is everyone right on the now? same just, cycle? <laughs> is everyone on the same cycle in this room? I get it. He's like, and he's just there to. It was cute. He was charming. Um, Nick, what did you give it? I also gave it a five. I just don't think there's much of a lull in the movie. It's a very. I wrote. It's just a good flick all the way around. It's solid to watch. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's funny. There's some great lines. Um, I don't know. It's just not. It's. There's nothing about it that I lost interest uh, uh, in during Fair. the movie. Um, yeah, I just switched it. I had it at a three. I'm going to switch it to a four. Um, nice. Only because we bring the hilarity aspect into this. Like, I thought it was engaging enough. You know, it's a rom-com, so I'm not, like, fully yeah. engaged in rom com It doesn't have the number of one-liners that... No, Friends so I, it has, wasn't but, trying too hard. But it doesn't try to have all of those one-liners. And it was trying to be a little more serious, which I, right. you know, it wasn't always intending to be a comedy. Um, I do like, I love the music and stuff. I'm going to talk about that and what uh, age the best. Um, the scene when he wakes up, there are certain moments that are really funny. The scene where he wakes up naked and they're all fucking with him is really funny to me. I just, I would get a kick out of doing that to someone. It's like, he's... I didn't get it. I'm going to talk about it in Hashtag Pulse, though, because I didn't get how they ended up having sex out of that. But uh, there were just, like, a lot of, like, throwaway lines that I really didn't like. There was that Prius line that he was talking about, like, the carbon fr- footprint. I was like, ah, yeah. trying. And then there was, like, the crime scene in my pants line. And, and, the, and then the also... The 3D glasses one. She's like, whoa, it looks really big. I'm like, no one would sit there and <laughs> do that. She says, it's coming right at me. It's coming right at... Yeah, I, it was dumb. Uh, the... Date is kind of cute when they finally go on the date. It's not really necessarily funny, but I felt myself more engaged when they started ramping things up. Yeah, it's adorable. Um, when they're um, at unlike Lachma, everything. <laughs> yeah. Lachma's never that oh, empty. I know, right? Yeah. There was no one there. And I was, <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, it was kind of crazy because it's going to be everyone on Instagram now. That's what's like hasn't <laughs> aged well because like Tinder and Instagram are a thing now. So a couple of the scenes could have been taken out completely. Um I don't know. It it didn't need to be, but I think it could have been more consistently funny through it. I thought all the funny scenes yeah, were really agree. good. I, would I just kind of got pulled out. That's why it's not like a six to me because I do think that it's genuinely a, a good rom com. Yeah, I'm an insecure male, and so rom coms just don't really do it for me. Ooh. And so <laughs> that's kind of where I was at with that. At but, least you're honest. Uh, yeah. So that's a four for me. Uh, fives from Nick and Julie. Um, Talk about friends with benefits, uh, spectac hilarity, Julie. Why don't you? I gave it a two. Yeah. Um, like I said, I watched this movie and gave it a big sigh. When they meet, just one? No, I mean one at the beginning, just bracing myself for what I was about to go through. Um, yeah. When they meet and they are having their quote unquote witty banter, it's horrible. It's not funny and it's not clever. When she's like on the carousel, yeah, or whatever. when she's on yeah. the carousel the and they're say, they're saying you know so. whatever to each other, like, and it's just trying so hard to be. Yeah, it just tries too hard. Yeah, it tries too hard. I gave it a that's, three. That's a it tries thing. too hard. It yeah. has a ton of lines and a ton of funny lines. I mean, there's things like there's things like uh, uh, <laughs> no skin, more pipe for me, like things that, <laughs> that uh-huh. Wilson alcohol. Now we're talking. Yeah, that's not how people talk. No, it just, it yeah, it tries too hard. It's not how people talk. No one talks like Woody Harrelson. Nobody says it's not the part of an elephant that you want when he's talking about a trunk. And yeah. it's like, c- come on, dude. Nobody talks like that. Nobody does that. There was a there was one line that I knew you probably scoffed at when he said it, but it was like. How can you really max out an old Navy card? And he goes, after college, I was really into cargo pants. Yeah. Like, that's just like, don't. He did like that line. You liked it? <laughs> I did like that. No, I thought, it was, I thought dumb. it was funny. That's not true. I just, it's just not, it's just not funny all the way through. They lose me uh, at the 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it just kind of like, there's too much going on. 
it's like a different movie at that point. Yeah, they change settings yeah. and then they do the whole like 4th of July in LA thing and the whole preceding part of that, it just they just lose me. Yeah. I just stopped. I just like You gave it a 3, so slightly below. Yeah. Yeah, I give it a 2 like Julie. Um one thing that Nick and I talk about a lot in spectacularity is we talk about the pacing of a movie. Exactly. This one is paced too fast. Too much happens in the first like few minutes of it when they're talking about their careers. It's going way too fast. And it has, even though it's making fun of romance movies, it's the most rom com score of all time. Oh my God, yeah. And then um, it also feels long as hell, even though it's only, it's less than two hours. If yes. It, it's lo- it's, I think it's less than No Strings Attached. It's because of the pacing, it, dude. It's, it's because too, they go so fast at the beginning and then they slow, slow it way, way down, down in yeah. the, fourth, the 4th of July part. And then the rest of the movie's like a crawl. Yeah. So in terms of the like comedy aspect of it, for me, it's not only that they're trying too hard, it's that there are too many pop culture references. Oh, Every yeah. single line, that's really hacky and lame and, and lame dialogue writing. Gabe hates too many pop culture references, Julie, in case you didn't know that about movies. Okay. Yeah, sometimes. Like well, no, sometimes references. I like it. Well, okay, so I do like... Do you just not understand them? Do you feel left out? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, uh, I do like the running joke about uh, Sully that he keeps talking about, Captain Sullenberger. Dude, it's no. only relevant now because they, Clint Eastwood had that No, movie. dude, it's I don't know. not funny. I thought it was funny. It's, the crisscross three. scene was really funny. When I when I first watched this movie, I remember going and it's listening cute. to Chris it's Cross. It's prime JT. Um, I also laughed hard when JT was with that like snarling girl uh, while he's on the phone. I thought she was good. I I really respect how we hard that girl. We disagree about tried. what is funny. The about one who's movie. like, who's calling, and he's like, my sister. And he's she's like, good, like, I'll it cut better her. Be. Yeah. She's like, I'll cut like, her. And, like, yeah, and you're like, okay. I don't know. I just. <laughs> there, okay, so I also we talked about this earlier. I don't like the stereotyping about L.A. and New York. It's hacky writing. It's Dude, not good. There are. It's not there, accurate. There are very few things about movies that I hate more than a movie that just like New York. Yeah, but there was like, one like line. It's a New York movie. It's about New York. New York. The New one York line is different than other cities. New York. <laughs> New York. Rats. It was the same thing with L.A. They were Taxi like cats. talking about what L.A. was like. <laughs> Uh, and it's just traffic. But I do like when she's like, wow, is it beautiful all the time? And the sister said, well, between the fires and floods, like we get some nice moments. And I'm like, damn, that's like so sadly true still. And yeah, It's more way so. worse now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, there was also too many cell service jokes. Okay, I wrote that down too because that's like, just so dumb. So she takes him up to her spot and she's like, this is the only place in the city that I don't get cell service. Well, it gets roped Turn your later. phone off. Yeah, true. <laughs> if you don't want people calling you, yeah, that's why, do you have to, way. why do you have to go mode, up to this? Girl? <laughs> why Wait, because I guess it rings roof. once and goes to voicemail if you have your phone off. I don't know. Airplane um, mode, dude. It's just trying too hard. There I give are it a two. three, I hate your idea that the Sully thing is funny because there know. are you three, just kept talking there about are three, it. at least three recurring jokes in in friends with benefits and all of them fall flat flatter than paper dude yeah. one of them is this stupid sully thing the other thing is they talk so much about- i like when she's like shut up you sound like an asshole and i was like that's the joke of this, this they talk joke. so much about mila kunis's vague ethnicity and it's okay, so annoying but i did really like when patricia clarkson was like bananas in the refrigerator what are you puerto rican just joking, your dad was Puerto Rican. And she goes, you said he was Greek. And she goes, potato, potato. I love the subtle racism. But then, okay, so that's funny. But then they keep trying to do it. And it's yeah. like, then it just loses steam over time. Yeah, and it's it like falls the same flat. thing with like all the Woody Harrelson jokes. Like the yes. first time it's funny. And then you're like, okay, and then they just harassment? They just beat a dead horse. <laughs> that's true. That's fair. All right. Well, speaking of steam, losing steam and rising steam, let's talk about our new category. Hashtag... Pulse. You mean Los Angeles' hottest new category? Los Angeles' it has, it hottest has everything. New, yeah. Throw um, music? So hashtag Pulse, what we're talking about with this is kind of just the romance aspect of it. How believable was their romance? Is it like a rom-com that makes you feel like warm inside and a little giggly? Like sometimes I watch certain rom-coms that I know are bad, but I'm just so charmed by the characters that I kind of blush when I'm watching it. And then like were they using realistic aspects of relationships and the issues with relationships or were they just like stereotypes and like lazy writing of relationships so while we're on 
Friends with Benefits, let's talk about that. Julie, why don't you get it started with hashtag polls? All right. I gave it a two. Okay. Um, I wrote down some things about this. Basically, just I wrote, they're just two people who decided to have sex. And then yeah, that's that's it. and yeah. they talk about their friendship and everything and they're like when they decide and they make their rules. Oh, I don't want to lose you as a friend. Like, how long have you known each other? Like two weeks. Right. Like, you just moved here. I never knew you existed yeah, before. I thing. forgot about like, how they're not actually they're not friends. friends. Yeah. I mean, well, if you are. if you were a single girl in New York, wouldn't you be just looking at anybody coming in? Like, all right, you're a potential. Well, that was what was confusing. <laughs> is like he didn't have any friends, obviously, because he moved out there. But she literally didn't have any friends. No. Yeah. And Neither she's of them fucking have funny, friends. and she's for Mila a, Kunis. For she's a funny and hot. And bringing all these people into exactly. New York, like none yeah. of these she's people. She's like a. She doesn't even hang out with work colleagues. Yeah, her yeah. job is networking, basically, and yeah. she has no friends, and neither does he. Yeah. It's so weird. So I, I didn't mean to cut you off with that, but no, yeah, that fine. was something that was So, so yeah, like weird. that thing with yeah. them saying they want to stay friends, and then, so she decides to start dating that oncologist who's from One Tree Hill. And yeah, Brian Greenberg, <laughs> why is he not more famous? He's great in How to Make It in America with Lake Bell and Kid Cudi. Hmm. I, I actually kind of like their 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 dating scenes where I I kind of yeah. believed in that romance. You believe in that until you find until out that he's, he's just asshole. like he just waiting five her. dates to yeah. have sex with her, and I don't know, like, is really? that even I didn't worth even it? Notice. Yeah, right. Like if you're, I don't know, I feel like if you're a doctor in New York City, you probably have better things to do than wasting this girl's time taking her on you five probably, dates. It is probably, Mila Kunis. Yeah. you're probably getting more squirrel than an oak tree. So nice. <laughs> is that a line in it? Yeah, that's fuck. <laughs> that's one of Woody Harrelson's lines. That's the one of the best lines. Yeah. More squirrel than an oak tree is pretty good. Yeah. But, but um, I, one of ahead. the things that makes their relationship just not really believable, and you believe in them more as a friends with benefits, is that neither she nor he care when she starts dating this guy. And they, they stay friends, and they're talking about it and everything. And when he eventually does, you know, dip out on her when she's getting them coffee, and he's like, oh, bye. Yeah. She goes to him. Right, right away. And he takes her out to L.A. and she meets his family and it's kind of just still a friendly thing until he tries to start it up again. Yeah. But even at that point, you don't really see any kind of feeling. It's just, you're single now, we can have sex again. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge contrast to the other movie where basically the same thing happens, but right. you see Ashton Kutcher's character. Be there's like, jealousy from both of them at yeah. different Jealous. times. Yeah. Um, and in yeah. this movie, there's never really any jealousy. Right, because there's not really a lot of outside forces except for the Brian Greenberg and then when he's with the girl um it's just it's Nick, what did you it's give it? shallow i also gave it a two i just okay. think it's a shallow kind of like relationship in a movie and it's not believable i didn't believe that they were really in love i barely believed i mean they were obviously very fast friends but like extremely fast they yeah, don't you're yeah. fast friends if you don't have any friends <laughs> yeah right i mean but yeah exactly like mila kunis apparently doesn't have a single friend in a like the largest most populated city in in north america like what yeah. I Okay, so I had it at a three. I'm actually moving it to a two. I don't know why I had it at a three. I was kind of confused by that. I do think <laughs> if there's anything great about this movie, for me, obviously not for either of you, for me, I felt like the chemistry between them, whether that be romantic or not, it was believable that these people could be in like a friends of benefits relationship because they're both like... They're both very similar personalities. And yeah, definitely. I really like... I kind of believed... I don't like... Okay, so um, uh, one thing I have to give a shout out to both of these movies. Some of the most realistic like makeouts. In If you think about movies like 20 to 30 years ago, they didn't look real how they kissed. These are like graphic makeout scenes. <laughs> yeah, there um, are, dude. <laughs> uh, I never really felt myself that charmed. It's so funny. Not, like really charmed until the end. I, I Something about the flash, see, flash dance scene kind of like... It was charming, and the way that they talked to each other, I kind of believe that. And the way that they let each other into their, at least with JT letting her into his like really sad life. Yeah. Like I liked that. I kind of believed in that. Fuck. Um, but uh, the sex scene when they first have sex is so unbelievable because they're like talking the whole. He's like a b z b b like while he's eating her out. Like it is. I, I, it wasn't, have you seen the movie Two Night Stand with Miles yeah. Teller? I, it's oh. not a good movie. Not no. a good movie at all. That, wait, but that's the one where he gets like snowed, snowed in. in. Yeah. yeah. It's not, 
a good movie, but I like when they decide to tell each other like a non-judgmental way of having sex with each other. That scene actually works for me in that, where it's like, can you do it like this? Can you do it like that? Mm -hmm. In this one, they're like, no, it, it's like this like rom-com -y music is really like funny in the background and they're doing, they're telling each other yeah. all these things. I think the whole issue is just that the writing in general isn't natural. No, um, you you feel manipulated. We, yeah. We've talked before about how you like some movies will manipulate you into feeling a certain way about certain scenes and certain people. Right. And this movie totally tries to pull your strings. Yeah. And make you feel a certain way. Totally. Like they use they use any movie any movie that uses follow you into the dark by death cab for cutie oh, God. in any scene yeah, is man, is emotionally manipulative it is too, yeah, because that, that song, song is so sad yeah it definitely gets and it. any and so sentimental yeah. so if any movie uses that it's automatically gets a, a bad score in terms of how believable right. the emotion in it is because that see, that song is so emotionally manipulative. Did you know that Ashton Kutcher <laughs> and Mila Kunis um, actually tried to do like a no strings attached friends with benefits type thing when they were first starting to hook up and then it turned out to now they're married and they're a power couple. Wow. I guess. And now they're friends with strings. Yeah. Or they got many married. strings now. They're strings with benefits. Well, okay, let's talk about hashtag pulse with friends with benefits. <laughs> or... or we can also call hashtag pulse premature ventricular contractions. There you go. <laughs> um, you mean with uh, with no strings now? Oh yeah, no yeah. no strings. Sorry about that. Well, uh, well, I gave it. I'll start off. Yeah, go I ahead. gave it. Um, I had a, an interesting progression here. I wanted to give it a low score for a while. I even turned to Julian and was like, "I don't believe this." And then by the end of the movie, I, I was like, "I'm gonna give it a six. I believe. Whoa, holy I shit. believe in the. I believe. In a thing called love, <laughs> I believe in a thing called love. I believe in. That's gonna be so. Hard. I believe in the. I believe in their relationship by the end of this movie. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman. It it grew on me, and I think that that's uh, powerful. It's not. I wasn't manipulated to feel that way. Wait, had you not seen this movie? No, I had, just like not for a really yeah, long okay. time. I guess it's kind of hard to remember. Yeah, it's um, like not super... Me well, we'll get into that category, but yeah. Yeah, what about you, Julie? You gave it a six? Damn. Yeah, he um, rated it higher than me. I gave it a five. Okay. What did you give it? I gave it a four. I okay. think it's average in terms of believability and relationship. I want to hear what Julie has to say first. I'll get yeah. into it. I mean, I kind of already went into it about um, how they get jealous of each other. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's a big part of... Real believing in their love and like seeing how they actually go from no strings attached to yeah what would be the force driving them to actually want to be together in the end and part one of those things is one of the it, yeah it pushes it's, them it's, yeah right? it's that they get jealous is that what of you're each saying? other um, yeah. yeah and that's kind of how they know that it's something more than that and that's right. I mean that's a powerful emotion that makes sense yeah it, it, it made sense to me I'll call people pumpkins if yeah I come in here and find women we're not here. pumpkins we're ladies <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just, a lot of it is because of Ashton Kutcher's Well, the best part about that was like, I don't even think he was trying to hook up with them. No, it's Ashton Kutcher's performance is like super solid in this movie in terms of how believable the romance is. Right. Yeah. He's and great he, in this. When he even has the chance yeah. to hook up with Lake Bell's character, he can't go through with it. No. Right. Well, she's she's most she doesn't really help that. that. Well, <laughs> he does. He does try actually, and then she's just like so fucking clueless, she's and he's so like, weird. "This isn't worth it." Um, yeah, I give it a four. Okay, so one scene I want to highlight of why I I I don't understand it. The first time they have sex, he wakes up hungover as shit, doesn't remember anything. Yeah. He's fully naked except for uh, like. Uh, just underwear or something like an on his dick and everyone's fucking with him and then does she literally only have sex with him because it's Ashton Kutcher and he's really hot or is it because he like helicoptered his dick at her or is it, like because he acted like a straight up pig the night before yeah, yeah also have you anyone out there who's been hung over like you smell like shit when you're hung over <laughs> and this guy is so deeply hung over that he's like butt ass naked on this leather couch like he had to have smelled so fucking <laughs> bad and natalie portman is like you know what this guy may be pathetic, but god damn is he sexy. Like, I don't know. I uh they also play the most like romantically sweet song while he's power fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> um so I also want to talk about how um, 
this isn't really about the movie, but one the Natalie Portman's like side guy, like the guy that's going after her, uh, at uh, is like the resident that also works with her. I love in the scene when he confronts Ashton Kutcher and he's like so smitten with the fact that Ashton Kutcher is boinking her every day. And he's like, you know what? After you're finished, just like destroying her every (laughs) night, I'm going to be there and I'm going to marry her and she's going to love me. Even though I'm like, like, he's like, you may be handsome and you may do the sex really good, but guess what? I'm going to get your seconds and you're going to feel yeah. awful about it. It's like, what is it happening? I didn't even this? think about that. That's so true. He's basically just like, you're doing it now, it's like, good but for- I'll do it later and that should hurt <laughs> you. Yeah, like good for him for not being territorial and jealous at all. Like, cool guy. <laughs> you really won that. Um, I think it's fairly common that the friends who have sex, like, the, I, I like the concept of the friends with benefits, no strings attached, eventually turning it into something like that, because I think that's just how it works. Um, I don't know how believable Portman was in the role, and that was kind of my problem. And like Nick said, like, I really thought that Ashton Kutcher sold it in terms of the romance. Um I, it just makes more sense as it goes on. And I really appreciated that about the movie, but there's a big section in the movie I didn't believe. Um, yeah. That's all I would say about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, you gave it a five, Julie. Nick gave it a six. I gave it a four. Let's move on to our last category. Legacy. Legacy. So with Legacy, because we're talking about um, comedies to a certain degree, we should also talk about how well it aged. Both right. of these movies came out in 2011. And it's how well it aged for yourself how well it aged for people, and then like what the response was and it, whether this is going to stand um, in the history of movies or in the history of rom-com movies. So let's finish it off uh, by starting with No Strings Attached. Nick, go ahead. Uh, no Strings Attached, I gave a two. Honestly, I gave a two to both in this category because okay. I just don't... I don't think either of them have like a legacy beyond... Being like, you remember that year in 2011 where there were two movies that were pretty much identical that movies. came out? I yeah, remember that? Yeah. That's their legacy. And that's not like not a good legacy. Right. You know, that's pretty much it. There's not, um, there's not a whole lot that stands out about either of them and holds up in the genre. Um, but uh, I guess the, the way that the comedy has aged is better in No Strings Attached, but not, I mean... Not so much that I want to give it a hugely better rating. So I'm going to yeah. give both twos. Okay. What about you, Julie? So I gave No Strings Attached. Oh, wait. Am I just going from yeah. the benefit? You could do either one. I think we're doing No Strings first. Okay. Yeah. I gave No Strings Attached a four just because I feel like I can remember quotes from this movie. And when right. I was watching it, I remembered a lot of it. Like I remembered what happens in their love yeah. storyline. Yeah. You really like this movie. I like, like this movie. G- you liked it a lot before you rewatched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and naturally, when it they both came out, this was my favorite. I did That's write right. one thing down from No Strings Attached that didn't age well, mm-hmm. and I put Ashton Kutcher's hair. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't really know what his haircut in this movie was. It but is it's kind like of very like bad. It, it, he looks yeah. like a like a twelve year old that's like yeah, doesn't want to like, choose what his haircut's gonna be, so the barber does it for him. Ashton Kutcher's kind of always had hair like that. I yeah, think. well, no, sometimes he makes it more like skatery and stuff. I don't know. It's very feathery. Yeah, he's a feathery do. I mean, there's some things that didn't age that well for it. Like, I, I mean, like the Tinder th- in the moment where he's looking to have sex in that that night when he finds out about his dad and his ex girlfriend or whatever. Like, he's Ashton Kutcher for one thing. He just right. just walk into a bar. Right. And then the other thing is like with Tinder, he would have found someone immediately. It wouldn't have you wouldn't have to call everyone in your phone. Um, they also make like a bunch of Lil Wayne references and like that <laughs> didn't do. really like age that well. Drink. Why? Yeah. <laughs> um, I do got to say how well the cover of 99 Problems aged for oh. me because I used to love it when that came, when it first I came out. I love that cover. And then there was that mariachi cover of yes, something. Dude, what was you just, it? Dude, you nailed it. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing ever. Like different it, genre <laughs> covers of other songs. Oh, it's, it's so cool. It's hot like, uh, hot like me. Don't Maybe you it was your like girlfriend. Yeah, was hot, don't you? Yeah, like yeah, or me. hot like me. Yeah. yeah, or whatever it's called. But it's a mariachi band. Yeah, I like that. And then uh, Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher didn't age a bit. Yummy, yummy. Um, <laughs> over time, because they're still hot. Um, don't 
<laughs> do an eyeball me. Uh, there's no eye candy. I do have to point out how weird the bleach teeth thing was because some people like Natalie Portman, like you could see on the on the back teeth they weren't bleached and every single person had really bleached teeth oh really? i don't know it, it was just like a big Didn't budget movie that. um you know like i i think it's it, what's funny about this movie is that when julie and i first had this conversation i was like Argument. everyone yeah <laughs> when we first had this discourse um every i was like everyone thinks that no strings attached and friends of uh is better or is worse than friends of benefits when it came out and I, even when I was asking people uh, what they thought about us doing this movie, they were like, well, that's easy. Uh, Friends with Benefits is way better. But it totally shifted, at least for me. I mean, it, it's kind of weird because it has like a 6.2 on IMDb with like 200,000 views, like good or uh, um, ratings. It had a 49% by critics. And a 51%, which is uh, for audience, which is really bad. Like yeah. when the audience, for something that's supposed to be like an easy delight to watch, people just really didn't like it. But it made like $149 million worldwide, mm-hmm. which is huge. Um, and it, I, for me, I'm going to give it a four just because I would have given it lower because of like objectively it was not well received, but it really aged well for me. And I, and I enjoy it a lot now. I would actually rewatch it. I, I really enjoyed it that yeah. much. So now how well did uh, friends with benefits age for you, Gabe? Well, I loved friends with benefits when it first came out. I especially loved Woody Harrelson's character. Um, who I thought now? was really funny. <laughs> it has. Not, I'm giving it a three for some reasons because because I have to. Both of them are moving in certain directions, and that and I'm giving you the rating now. Right. Um, I just feel like a lot of the gay stuff didn't age well at all. Mm-mm. Like there are references, like they're, they're really homophobic about liking Harry Potter and like fuck that, yeah, fuck dude. That. Harry Potter's not gay, and if it was, good. I love it even more. And uh, I love Harry Potter. I don't know how to word that. But um, I just felt like Woody Harrelson's like character was almost like a caricature of a gay guy's guy. Like almost. a guy's guy. Almost. Well, it's just like not that uh, this guy is strictly a dickily or whatever. Dude. It's like, I'm going to, he's, he's like, you sure you're not gay? Let me, uh, let me talk to you afterwards. It's like, dude, stop. The- you're almost making fun of gay people at this point. He absolutely is, dude. It's not, it's not good. It's not, I just it's can't just imagine. Woody Harrelson. So it's yeah. okay. Cause it's Woody Harrelson. There's some but it's semi-racist not okay. stuff in it too. Uh, also like. The movie can can only exist within the, like the fun, quirky rom com environment, and they make that really clear at the end uh, or at the beginning. But then, it th- what it does in terms of how it's a rom com in terms of the music and the style and the like really fast scenes at the beginning where they're cutting back and forth between the characters and you're getting a sense. It almost dates the movie back to the beginning of the decade and the beginning of the century when rom-coms were a thing because we don't make rom-coms anymore unfortunately sometimes they're on like netflix but we don't make like big theatery rom-coms there's some um that are popular but not a lot but back then it was all the time and so i don't know it just dates the movie so that that's kind of what i was going to talk about i'll talk about the ratings and stuff and what's what's different about that but i want to hear what you guys have to say julie go ahead so i gave it a two okay um, I wrote down that there was literally nothing memorable except flash mobs. Yeah. 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 I don't know what else I remember. I remember the crisscross thing. I remembered <laughs> a lot of things. As of, you were watching. As I was watching and I was like, oh, is this the movie that she starts dating a guy and goes on five dates? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, is this the movie where his dad takes his pants off in the airport? Yeah. Oh, Yeah. I had actually forgotten about that part. Yeah, I forgot about the dad. It's so yeah. sad. So you just like couldn't, it's not like that memorable. At least it, it wasn't, wasn't for you. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It, yeah, it just was not memorable. Yeah. I actually kind of forgot a lot too. But yeah, I just don't think it's memorable. Like I said, I just think that the legacy of these two movies is that they're like forever intertwined for the rest of history mm-hmm. as two movies that are pretty much exactly the same. And that's their legacy. Right. I mean, what, what did you give it? I gave it a two. I gave them both twos. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to try and differentiate. However, I do think that the, the, uh, the like, the response the, was way different. The, the, the response is, it's it. 
it's blows wild. me away. Yeah. It blows me away that Friends with Benefits just has higher ratings. Well, I remember when it came out. And, and I think the audience as well. I remember when it came out, I was like, wow, that's so much better than that No Strings Attached movie I watched this year. And like, it's kind of weird that everyone felt that way. And I bet if anyone is rewatching this for the purposes of our podcast, you're going to be pleasantly surprised by No Strings Attached. Yeah. I mean, this like, so this one got a 6.5 on IMDb, which is kind of similar. Um, but it got a 63 Metacritic, 68% critic, and like a 65% audience, which is still not great, yeah. but it's not... It's a, a lot better, but it also made $149 million. They both made a similar amounts of money. Um, I don't know. I think it, it has a good legacy in terms of success, but not a good legacy in terms of rewatching. I thought it was painful to rewatch. Um, yeah, let's add it up. Julie, do you have your final scores? Yeah. Let's hear it, Julie. So No Strings Attached <laughs> is 23. Okay. And Friends with Benefits is 11. Cool. Okay. Mine is uh, 20. 11 out of 35. Mine is 21 for No Strings and okay. 13 for Friends with Benefits. Okay. Uh, mine is 18 for No Strings Attached out of 35. I mean, most of that is just because it's a rom-com for me. Right. Friends with Benefits, 10 out of 35. So I actually gave it the lowest, which is so funny considering if we were going in both. this. Yeah. Considering, well, but we knew I probably wouldn't like No Strings that much. But Julie and I have had this discussion, argument, discourse, multiple times. <laughs> so, uh, and it's, it's funny uh, 62 how it to 34 in favor of... Out of 105? Out of one, Yeah, out of 105. In favor of uh, the Ashton Kutcher, Natalie Portman vehicle that is... Yeah, good job, No Strings Attached. No Strings Attached. Let's move on to our accolade section where we highlight a few things. Uh, Julie, do you have an MVP for either of these movies? I didn't think that far. Okay. Dramatic pause. Is there something that, that you... dramatic pause was coming. What do you, you like something. when you think of the, these movies, and it, maybe it's probably No Strings Attached because you like that a lot more. Like, what is like the MVP? Is it Or who is the MVP? What's the best thing about either of these movies? Probably Kutch. Yeah. yeah, fair. I think he's an MVP. My MVP though was um, was the the songs that you mentioned. Yeah, because I love me some. If you have a girl problem, love him better. You said I can love me some cross genre covers. But yeah. Ashton Kutcher, I would agree. Julie is the best. I'm gonna go with Cooch too. I think he was Cooch. good. Cooch, uh, Cooch, <laughs> Well, it's not Kush. Not how you pronounce it. Yeah, it's but he's Kutch. not. Yeah, but Kutcher. you. Kutch. All right, I'm gonna it's go with Kutch. the Kutch. I'm thinking of Kutch. Coops because you said the Coops is your MVP for another movie. Um, do you have an LVP for either of these? Like, like the worst part of either of these movies? Whoa. I I think the LVP is Woody Harrelson. I liked him. I just shouldn't. I think it just the, wasn't like a good character. I think the. The end part of the word liked, the uh, the suffix is the operative part yeah, of that that's true. statement. No, I mean, when I rewatched it, I still love, I love watching Woody Harrelson. I just thought it was a horribly written character. Yeah, he's my LVP now because oh, his shtick got real old. Yeah, what about you, Julie? Dramatic pause. I don't know. I, I want to say Justin Timberlake because I was just very disappointed in him. Yeah, yeah that's I fair. That's or the fair. usage of him. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess mine is just like, I don't really have an LVP. There's a lot that I really don't like about yeah. Ludacris is like technically an LVP. <laughs> oh my for me. God. Yeah. He's so bad. He's atrocious. Well, maybe you should have said Sean White. God, it's not funny. Um, I said, maybe you should have said Sean White. Do you oh have my a God. favorite? Sean oh. White's an LVP. <laughs> no, for sure. Sean White is MVP dude, for me. Dude, you put any other, why Sean White? Put someone else in there that can actually deliver dude, a line. He's dude. hilarious in that. No, the lines they wrote for him are hilarious. <laughs> I did, he I is dug not it, funny. Dude. No, I, I was into it. Um, okay, do you have like a favorite scene, least favorite scene, any least of that? Least favorite scenes all involve Sean White. Fuck off already. <laughs> Only thing that's funny about Sean White is when Justin Timberlake fixes Sean White's hair a little bit. Yeah, That part's fair. funny. We'll do, do you have a like favorite scene you want to shout out or least favorite scene? Something that... No. Okay. I can't think of any. <laughs> I do love the part when <laughs> Jake Johnson's like, um, I'm... I can't masturbate to porn when there's all this real sex going <laughs> That's on around a great me. Line, yeah. Uh, I d he's almost an MVP. Jake Johnson is so great. He's this. And back then, 
it was pre-bearded Jake Johnson. Yeah. He was like this treasure we didn't know that we were all going to be obsessed with. Because when I first saw the movie, I was like, yeah, that guy's in some stuff. Baby now Jake, Jake Johnson's one of my favorite people. Um, we already talked about some quotes. Well, let's end it. Do you, uh, do you have any recommendations of rom-coms or anything that people should watch? Julie, you got any? Rom-coms in general? Yeah, sure. But are there ones that you think that people haven't really watched that they should? Like smaller ones. I don't personally like. have any. I have a few. Because I don't really watch rom-coms, nor do I really care for them. So I was thinking about this when I was talking about Friends of Benefits and how it's making fun of romance movies while trying to be a rom-com. I really love the movie They Came Together with Paul Rudd and oh, yeah. uh, Amy Poehler. I think it just perfectly Dude, makes people, fun of people sitcoms. People hated that, but we love well, that. Because it's like we weird as shit. I get yeah. it. It's by the same guy who did Wet Hot American Summer. Um, it's uh, just a parody. It's great. Oh, yeah, I, I love it. That. I thought it was really accurate to a lot of the movie. tropes of rom-coms. Um, my favorite rom-com, it's kind of more of a romance than a rom-com, but my favorite one ever is Serendipity with uh, Kate Beckinsale. Um, I don't know that one. You haven't seen that one, dude. It's it's great. That's ch- and John Cusack. It's charming as hell. Well, thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, those are. You good. don't have like a Disney movie, Julie? That's like your favorite romantic comedy yeah, Disney too. movie. You know, like a million Disney movies that no one's ever heard of. Yeah, you work there. You are Disney. <laughs> you know, Mister <laughs> Disney. Oh, he's too dead. Soon. He's also <laughs> too soon. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> None? I mean, None? If, okay. I, if I knew this was going to be a question, I would have prepped for this. You have heard You've every heard single podcast. one of our podcasts. Yeah. Well, all right, no recommendations. <laughs> but if you, as the audience, if you have any recommendations of rom-coms that we should do or ones that you just think that we should listen to, we'd love to hear them. Uh, you can follow us uh, on social media. You can follow us Instagram.com slash Facing Off Pod. Just look up Facing Off. Uh, twitter.com slash facing off pod just look up facing off and then you can email us we would love to get emails i'm so thankful to Otto and to uh maddie for sending us emails it's um, kevin yeah kevin gathman for sending us emails uh send us an email at facing off podcast at gmail.com uh we got a lot of good episodes coming up we have one that's going to be pretty fun uh a christmas episode um and we decide what we're going to do we're going to do Elf versus Noel. Uh, Elf, I think, could be found on a lot of different platforms right now. It's gotta be somewhere. Everyone's around, seen somewhere. Elf, also. Right. Um, and then Noel is on Disney Plus right now. I think it's a Disney Plus original. Maybe. Is it? Um, yeah, with uh, Anna Kendrick, our girl. Um, that's gonna be a really fun one. Uh, Julie, do you uh, want people to follow you on Instagram? Or are you good? I'm gonna tag you in the post, anyways. Follow me. Go ahead. All right. You could follow her at... uh, It'll be in the post. Just look it up. (laughs) I don't remember if it's Julianne or whatever. Um, Cool. Do you have a send-off? Yeah. Let's hear it. We're not pumpkins. We're ladies. (laughs) I love that line. You look like a pumpkin, bitch. (laughs) Uh, I I may have to kill this dog. Just not sure how. That was so (laughs) funny. I forgot to talk about that earlier. Uh, hey, fuck this! You want to get your shit out of my car or what? Welcome to New York! Go and fuck a dick! <laughs> <laughs>